Okay, so this is a dive that I did a couple weeks ago with a couple buddies, Jonathan and uh, Chris. This is a, a deep dive that we did down to the 100 foot platform or so, then went towards the wall. Um, bear with me here, it's my first voiceover. At this point, we are getting ready to go down. And you can tell there's a lot of algae on the rope there. And it got hung up on my camera there and I was trying to shake it off. But, uh, we're going down about, about 75 feet right here. The sunlight starts dissipating a little bit. Um, camera that I'm using is a Paralens. It's pretty cool. I have it on um, a white auto balance since it's going to be a dark, uh, dark dive and about 3,500 lumens uh, so far we're about oh, about nine, almost 90 feet again it's me Chris and uh, Jonathan there's the 100 foot platform my camera mount kept hooking onto the rope as I was going down but I got it unsnagged first thing I noticed when I got to the 100 foot platform were eggs my guess is that these eggs were left over from maybe an advanced uh, open water class for the deep dive specialty perhaps and they were do doing the um, pressure buoyancy where you crack the egg open and it and you can see how the pressure basically makes the egg form into a perfect sphere it's kind of cool if you've never seen it before highly recommend that class by the way um, so our, our dive plan was hit the 100 foot platform and make sure everyone is okay everyone group up as you can see those lights are freaking bright I was trying to stay off the platform as much as possible because it's really easy to silt that up down here it's about 50 about 50 degrees or so nice clear day so actually you can see a little bit of the light penetrating down to that depth which is definitely not the norm very clear down here actually you'll see when we get closer to the wall so Jonathan he's the side mounter that's Chris um, there's Jonathan, he's the side mounter, he's leading the dive, we're following him. So our plan was to head to the wall, and then um, venture along the wall towards the left side of the quarry, and then when we hit turn pressure, or, um, or NDL, we turn and start heading back up gradually. About 100 feet where we're at. Jonathan's really good about checking on his dive buddies, making sure we're okay. A lot of stuff in the water, they're reflecting back the light. I was in my dry suit. I was trying to check the buoyancy a little bit. I had some max suit squeeze, so I was putting some air into my suit there. So Jonathan's leading. I'm in the middle. Chris is behind me. Now we're about 105. I think I go down to about like 120 or so. A little bit. So yeah, we're about 106 feet or so. I didn't really notice it at the time until I started 
review on my uh, the video here that you know there's a lot of particulates in the water kind of reflecting the light back and I apologize about that doesn't seem to be an issue unless you're got a really bright light which you do if you're diving that depth but for the most part it was pretty clear at that depth so still moving along the wall yeah, about 114, 113 feet at this point temperatures down to about 51 degrees or so so if I remember correctly at this spot we're really close to the U-Dock. We're literally right under it, I think. But if you ever dive at this spot, you need to be careful because there's a lot of uh, debris down here that you can easily get hung up in. A lot of old rope that's been thrown in there. Some old fence have been has been uh, thrown down there. You definitely want to keep away from that stuff. You can kind of see it there coming up on the bottom there of your screen. Yeah, see? If someone decided it was a good idea to Roll it up and instead of properly disposing it, we just dump it in the water. Great idea. Not only does it create a hazard, but it's also it kills somebody. That f that rolled up fence that you're about to see here in a minute, uh, it's it's metal, right there. So if you get caught up in that you would not be able to cut it so please make a note if you dive at these kind of depths run under the u-dock just please remember to stay away from that stuff it will kill you if you get get caught up <clears throat> I'm not sure if I got a good picture of it but a little ways past there Here's even some more debris, some old signs, uh, an old stairwell, some stairs, but the stairs have some old rusty nails sticking out, so um, be careful. You don't want to brush up against it. It'll hurt like hell, but it'll also mess up your, your dry suit. You definitely don't want to do that. So we're still moving along, nice, slow, even. Even pace, slow, big breaths. So I'm probably around 120 or so, 120 feet here. Um, Jonathan and Chris are in front of me. A lot of particulate in the water there. If you go down to the bottom, it's probably around 130 feet at this area. It kind of slopes downward. Still moving along. Nice even pace. That's John signaling us, asking if we're okay. He's very good about checking on his dive buddies. I really appreciate that. So it's probably getting close to turning the dive for me because at this at this point I think I'm around five, four or five minutes in DL. I'm about to get down to close to half a tank of gas, about 1600 psi. That's when I 
signal then the time to turn around. Yeah, see here I'm. I think I'm switching to my. Yep, my narrow beam to get attention. Tell him it's time for me to turn. So we turn around, basically head back towards the dock, toward the bus, and kind of ride the MDL on the way back. One of these days I'm going to get good enough where I uh, can just navigate <clears throat> without using uh, with using a compass. <laughs> of course, if you've got a wall, you know where you're at in the wall, then I guess you really don't need the compass. But it'd be nice to venture out into the into the spring and be able to know which direction you need to go to get back to the dock or or so forth. Just comes with practice. There's Jonathan. I'm right, right behind him on his left side there. I kind of make my way above him. That way I'm not in his way. I didn't know it at the point, but after the dive, um, Chris is starting to get a little bit narked. I turn around, I notice him. I was above him, and I kind of noticed him turning around. I thought something was up, but um, I think he was okay. Now I'm looking for Chris. Where'd he go? There he is. Can't really tell, but he's getting narked. I'll start watching him. I'll put my camera down for a minute. I'm trying to signal if he's okay. And now I'm... I'm going to start making my way back down to him. I don't know if you've ever been narked, but it kind of feels like you're, kind of like you're, well, for lack of a better term, you're drunk. Thankfully, he's okay, though. He got a little busy. That's happened to me before. You never can tell when it's going to happen. It's just comes on out of nowhere. So yeah, he's telling me, I'm asking if he's okay. And eventually John will look behind and be like, where the hell did they go again? So he'll, he'll come back here. To, he'll come back in a second here. Chris is okay at this point. We're back together. We're heading back toward the bus. I made sure he was okay. So we're coming up onto a, a buoy line here shortly. John's turning around. Making sure we're okay. Yep, we're okay. Just keep moving along. We're riding the MDL. Chris checking his gas, his computer. Warmed up nicely to 54 degrees now. <laughs> Keeping an eye on Chris. I'm 
about 71 feet or so. So when you start getting closer to about 60 feet or so, I I turn my uh, the mode my um, white auto balance. I turn the parallel lens to um, color correction mode, and you'll see the uh, the green tint of the water start getting uh, filtered out here in a second or so. And the picture looks really good. Really like the parallel lens and its auto color correction. I have to keep up with a billion filters and so forth. And you can change it. You can change the mode underwater. It won't leak or anything. So John Stan, okay, well, I think we're at the rope. Yep, we're at the rope. He's saying, okay, everyone's, everyone's okay. Stay close together. We're going to go up nice and slow, ride the NDL. So if we plan it right, we're going to come up right behind the stern of the bayliner by the bus. That's our plan anyway. So we signal everyone's okay and we start moving out. Tell about this depth are about 60 feet. We'll get ready to start changing the camera mode over to um, color uh, correction. definitely tell a difference. So notice the green hue here and then when I change it you definitely can tell a difference. So I think I'm about to change it now. For now. <laughs> definitely tell the picture quality has definitely gone up so we did exactly like our dive plan came up behind the stern of the bayliner bus is right in front of the boat I've actually gone all the way into the bow of that boat. Came back out. There's the bus, you can see it. Definitely a lot better picture of clarity here. The particulates in the water are not reflecting A because I turned my, my light my torch off. And B, it's on a different camera mode, so it helps. So I start making my way over to the, the buoy line. This is right next to the dock, right under it. And um, you can actually see the dock there. That's how clear the water is. So I let Jonathan and Chris, so technically Chris is my dive buddy, I'll let him know that it's time for me to start heading up and heading back to the, uh, the U dock. My goal is always to do my safety stop and have, a, and have at least a, min, a minimum of at least 500 PSI of air left when I end my dive and my safety stop complete. So the, the line going from the dock to the U dock is at 15 feet. So if you time it right and keep an eye on your computer, you can do your safety stop while traveling, swimming to the, the U dock. And I think I ended this dive about 504 PSI, 522, uh, around there somewhere. So me and Chris, since Chris is my die buddy, we're, we're heading up the line. Jonathan is heading up right under us. 
So about 30 feet here. I really hope the clarity this season really holds out. We had a big algae boom last year. about 20 feet or so. So at this point I'm technically doing my safety stop time. Um, I motion to Chris, I'm going to head down the line toward the U dock. give myself a little selfie I guess. So the dry suit I'm using is a Pinnacle, uh, Pinnacle Liberator. It's a great suit, I love it. And if you're interested in doing a dry suit or dry suit class, let me know. I know a good buddy of mine that you can do get a dry suit from and he'll do a dry suit class for free so uh, a suit and learn how to use it free class it's a good deal that's what I did don't you go dry suit you never go back yeah, unless it's 95 degrees outside Yeah, that's Chris again. Yeah, I think he's still narked. <laughs> so, temperature here about 15 feet. It's warmed up to a nice balmy 55 degrees. We're heading back toward U dock. So, counting down safety stop time. Looks like all the little baby jellyfish. There's freshwater jellyfish in this. In the spring, they come out back in October. That's usually when they come out. I think they all are gone now. But the water's got to be perfect. I mean, just perfect for freshwater jellyfish to exist. This is one of the few, this is the first place I've ever even seen them here. This is, aquifer is the same aquifer that Budweiser uses at their brewery. So we made it back to the U-Dot. At this point my safety stop is, it's not done, it's almost done. So I'll start making my way through the line and just check, make sure Chris made it back. There he is. We're about to start ready to ready to end the dive. Like I said, I think I ended my dive with about 500, and, a little over 500 psi, which is exactly what you want to do. You know, 500 psi is supposed to be your reserve limit. You don't want to go in reserve unless you have an emergency. So back at the dock where we started. It's a great dive. And no, I wasn't cold. Dry suit was fantastic. And like as you see, it's a perfect day. Thanks for watching. If you uh, would help me out, give me a like and a subscribe. I would appreciate it. Thanks again, guys.